the senses. Skin and touch. So we're going to go through each sense with a different PowerPoint, but just generally there's uh, these types of receptors. So there are chemoreceptors, which respond to changes in chemical concentrations, um, including your smell and your taste. There's also internal chemoreceptors to determine changes in blood concentrations of oxygen, hydrogen, ions, glucose, etc. Uh, pain receptors, also called nociceptors, N-O-C-I-C-E-P-T-O-R-S, respond to tissue damage. There are also thermoreceptors, which respond to changes in temperature. Mechanoreceptors respond to mechanical forces. These are the ones detecting changes that deform the receptors, mostly found in your skin and tissues. So we're going to focus on mechanoreceptors today. And then there are photoreceptors, which respond to light, and these are only found in your eyes. The kitty. All right, so sensory receptors. Um, these receptors are either the ends of neurons or other kinds of cells near the ends of those neurons. And when we're talking about ends of neurons, we're talking about dendrites. So it could either be the receptors found on the dendrite of neurons, or it's different cells near those dendrites so that they can transmit the signal quickly. So how uh, impulse is sent is a stimulation of the receptor causes a local change in the membrane potential. So that's called a receptor potential. And then a graded electrical current is generated that reflects the intensity of the stimulation. So it'll be a very strong uh, current if it's a very strong stimulation or a weak current if it's a weak stimulation. If the receptor is part of the neuron, it's the dendrites, then the membrane potential will generate the action potential and send it to onto the uh, sensory fiber. <clears throat> if it's another cell not directly on the neuron, then the signal needs to be transferred to a sensory neuron before it will create and trigger an action potential. So there's two different words we're going to be using. We're going to be using sensation, which occurs when the brain becomes aware of sensory impulses, and then perception is how the brain interprets those sensory impulses. So like I said, sensation is the feeling that, <coughs> excuse me, that occurs when the brain becomes aware of sensory information. Um, and then the nerve impulse travel to the brain are alike. So the sensation depends on the region of the brain that is stimulated. And we're talking about the brain, we're specifically talking about the cerebral cortex, that sensory cortex. So depending on where in that region, where it's stimulated, you will have different sensations. Um, some receptors don't trigger sensations. So something like determining the oxygen level in your blood, you don't have a sensation uh, related to that receptor, but most others you do. Uh, while sensory receptors are specialized to very specific stimuli, like your uh, smell receptors smell chemical changes, um, they can respond to other stimuli if the stimuli is strong enough. So sometimes when, it, when there are drastic changes in temperature, your pain receptors will be stimulated, as well as your thermoreceptors. But the, sens the sensation will be the same because it's triggering the same portion of your cerebral cortex. So skin receptors are mechanoreceptors, and there are three types. There are free nerve endings. Uh, the sensory, they're found in the epithelial tissue. They are found in between epithelial cells, and they are responsible for the sensation of itching. Um, then there are tactile or Meissner's corpuscles. Um, these are mostly found where you have hairless portions of your skin. So fingertips, lips, palms, soles of your feet, nipples, external genitalia. And these receptors are responsible for your fine touch uh, to determine texture of objects. So you can distinguish between two points of your skin that are being touched at the same time. And then there are lamellated piscinian corpuscles. Uh, these are found in the deep dermal tissues of your hands, feet, penis, clitoris, urethra, breasts, tendons, ligaments. Um, well, not all of those because not all of you have a penis or a clitoris. Um, and it is stimulated by heavy pressure and stretch. These are found very deep, deep, deep within. So it responds mostly to deep pressure. It also detects vibrations in tissues. So here in this top picture, we have our uh, sensory fibers, our free nerve endings. And remember, they're found between epithelial cells. We have our Meissner's corpuscles, which 
are small oval masses, so that's this light pink, and they're flat, and the nerve fibers, uh, found here, this yellow, uh, branch into the corpuscle and end in the knob. So this is the knob, and here's our end of our nerve. Pacinian corpuscles are large, they're uh, ellipsoidal, and they're composed of many connective tissue cells and tissue fibers. She's going cray. All right, thermoreceptors uh, detect change in temperature, and there's two types. There are warm receptors and cold receptors. So warm receptors respond to the range of 77 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. If you get above 113, the pain receptors will kick in, and you'll have a burning sensation. Cold receptors respond to 50 degrees to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything below 50 degrees will cause pain receptors to kick in, and you'll have a freezing sensation. When the temperature, ex um, when you are in an environment of a specific temperature for a while, your temperature sensors adapt. When it adapts, it means they stop sending so many signals so that you are you don't feel the sensation of cold or warm. And this is why if you jump into a really cold swimming pool or the ocean or a really hot bathtub, over time you become comfortable in that environment because your receptors stop sending signals. So like I said, that's adaptation, so your sensory, sensory receptors can adapt. So this is where fewer and fewer action potentials are sent, and they eventually stop. And then you're not, either not smelling that smell, you're not feeling that pain, or you're not uh, feeling that temperature. But um, once a new signal is sent, only if it is a change in the strength of the stimulus will you feel that stimulus again. <clears throat> My cat's going crazy. Uh, proprioception. So proprioceptors are located in your muscles, tendons, and joints, and they respond to mechanical movements. So this is where your lamellated corpuscles are coming in, um, and those lamellated corpuscles, those pisidian corpuscles, are found in your tendons and ligaments. So this is how you know where your body parts are and when they're moving. And there's two other proprioceptors. They're the muscle spindles in this picture and the Golgi tendon organs. So muscle spindles, so this is within a skeletal muscle near where a tendon is connected. And it is many muscle fibers that are wrapped in a connective tissue sheath, found here it's the white. Um, and near the center there are parts of the muscle fibers that are not striated. So they don't have sarcomeres. And the nerve endings of a neuron will wrap around those portions of the muscle cells. You can see that here. Um, so what happens is when the whole muscle is stretched or relaxed, this whole spindle is stretched as well. That stretching of the spindle causes a stimulus um, and it triggers the muscle to contract. So this is how, what helps you maintain a desired position despite gravity or other forces moving on it. Golgi tendon organs are found in the tendons close to their attachments to muscle. So here we have our tendon, here we have our muscle. It's connected to the muscle fibers directly, and it's also connected to a sensory neuron, seen here. And this stimulates, um, it's stimulated by increased tension, and it causes the reflex to inhibit contraction. So you uh, relax your muscles. So pain receptors, like I said, are also called nociceptors, um, and these are free nerve endings. They're found everywhere in your skin and internal tissues except for your brain, and we talked about that and we've watched a few brain surgery videos. They protect you against tissue damage, so they sense damage to any tissue, and then they release chemicals that uh, stimulate receptors, which cause you to feel pain so that you can respond to it. They adapt very, very poorly, meaning uh, you're not going to... Pain receptors will not stop sending action potentials over time. Um, and we've been talking about that syndrome where you don't feel pain. So that's actually called um, HSAN, Hereditary Sensory and Autonomic Neuropathy. And it's where a person lacks nociceptors, so they don't have pain receptors. And I was reading up on it, and they typically don't live past their 20s because of injuries The they're not sensing. So they have a lot of broken bones, severe burns, their teeth fall out because they don't know when they're biting too hard. They bite off their tongues. 
They also lose their sight a lot because they rub their eyes too hard and they don't feel that pain. Um, so specifically, low oxygen levels can trigger pain internally. Uh, and an excessive stimulation of mechanical mechanoreceptors can also trigger pain. Uh, there's a couple ways to control pain. There's encephalins and there's also endorphins. And we're going to talk about those more a little later. So visceral pain is pain within your body and its stimulation will trigger pain um, if it's widespread, meaning over a lot of your viscera, over an entire portion of your intestine. But if it's localized, meaning a very small area of viscera is stimulated, then you won't feel pain, typically. Two types of pain, there's acute pain, and this includes thin myelinated fibers, and fibers, remember, is axons. Uh, so this sends very fast, sharp signals. So this is uh, responsible for your sharp pain, uh, but it typically stops when the stimulus stops. Um, and these um, are found typically in your skin. There's also chronic pain, which are thin, unmyelinated axons, and these send impulses much slower. So it's a very dull ache. Um, and it typically doesn't stop after the stimulus stops. And it's very difficult to pinpoint where is that pain coming from. There's also a concept called referred pain, which is where different organs share common nerve pathways, meaning you will feel uh, the pain in different parts of your body than where it was stimulated. This is most common in heart attacks. Uh, so pain originating in the heart can be referred to the left shoulder or the upper arm, to the skin, so you feel pain there. And this is because the heart and that area of the skin use the same nerve pathway. So the cerebral cortex incorrectly interprets the source of the impulse and directs the pain there. And this diagram is in your book and it shows where pain is referred to. So you might feel lung and diaphragm pain in this area of your neck. You might feel liver and gallbladder pain in this area. And these are all areas on your skin. So you'll feel that pain on your skin depending on those organs. Uh, like I said, there's a few ways to regulate pain. So your thalamus is what um, allows you to be aware of the pain. And it goes the, the impulse goes to your thalamus first. And then it goes to your cerebral cortex. And the cerebral cortex is what judges the intensity of the pain, locates where that pain is coming from, uh, produces your response to the pain, and also produces emotions uh, to that pain. And then pain inhibiting substances, we have enkephalins. Enkephalins and endorphins are very similar in that they're both released in response to extreme pain and they're natural pain control. So they're inhibiting neurotransmitters, so they stop those impulses from being fired. Um, when serotonin is released, it stimulates other neurons to release enkephalins. So serotonin promotes the release of more enkephalins. So projection is when your brain projects the sensation back to the source of stimulation. So at the same time a sensation forms, the cerebral cortex interprets it to seem to come from the receptors being stimulated so that you're... Uh, determining where all those sensations are starting from. So your brain projects the sensation back to its source. So if you're eating an apple, your fingers touch the apple, your nose seems to smell the apple, and your ears seem to hear you crunching the apple. So that all the stimuli are uh, projected back to their source.